Well, good morning, everybody. This is a great day for the city. This wonderful center here is more than a state-of-the-art track and field facility. This is a place of transformation. And this notion of transformation is baked into the history and future of this place here at 30th and Ali. Let me tell you why. This spot was once a hub of commerce and jobs through the tobacco economy as far back as the late 19th century. More money went through this spot of land at that point in time than any other place in the entire Commonwealth. And when the tobacco companies moved out, it became eventually a vacant lot filled with litter and broken glass. But at Metro Government, we recognized that this could be a special place. So when it became available, we, and when I say we as Metro Government, I mean you all as taxpayers of this great city, we acquired the land and looked for someone who could lead the transformation of these 24 acres. And what you see here, as has been mentioned by Sadiqa and others, was not the first effort to transform this property. I want to thank Stephen Riley for leading the work to explore opening this site up as a food port. And that turned out not to be the right project at the right time. And sometimes we all know that happens in life. So in partnership with the community, we had to determine what would be the right project. And we knew it had to be a project that would attract investment, provide jobs, and economic benefit to the people of Russell and West Louisville. And while this is an amazing facility right here, I want you to close your eyes and dream what this is going to look like in the coming years in the streets around here, in the neighborhoods around here. This is going to be the nexus of a huge wave of investment. But it's clear that the right project was a world-class track and field facility. And no question, the right leader was Sadiqa Reynolds. We've heard that time and again, and Sadiqa and I have worked together a long time. She's got the right stuff. So Metro government was proud to turn over the land to the Louisville Urban League and be the lead investor with the first $10 million for this project. And as Sadiqa said, it's always hardest to get the first money. And then things open up a little bit after that. But it was no easy journey for them to raise the money for this whole facility. So for the citizens of Louisville, thank you guys for believing in this project. So when I also look to the future, I'm, I know that there are going to be future road scholars that come out of the Learning Center. I know that there are going to be future Olympians and pro athletes who come out of this center. We got some pretty good models to follow there. A young man named Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, raised a couple blocks from here. And our other Olympian, Alan Houston, the son of Alice, raised just a few blocks from here. They won't be the last Olympians to come out of this neighborhood. Yeah. And this facility is also going to develop future coaches and teachers and professionals of all kinds that are going to learn about commitment and sacrifice and teamwork that they're going to pass on to future generations. So I'm really, really, really proud of this place and the transformation that it represents. And I'm so grateful to everybody that made it possible. I'm excited about what's ahead. I'm going to close with a line you can find among the display of powerful historic images in the lobby on the west side of the building, a line that speaks to the soul of this facility, this neighborhood, and I believe in even our country. And that line is simply, we have just begun to run. Thanks, everybody. Please welcome Councilwoman Donna Purvis to the podium. Good morning. I am really honored to be here on this great day to witness this great accomplishment. Sadiqwa, I like to say that all praises go to you and your team. You had a statement, run with us, 
And I never told you that that statement gave me the energy that I needed not only to face, but address the small challenges that I faced in this role to make sure that this project would take off and that everything that you had worked forward, worked hard for would not go to waste. J just a small, because you did a lot of work, but your energy prepared me to be your spokesperson when I needed to be on the council. I saw you enter the race. I saw you run the race. You never looked back. You ran past doubts and fears, and you not only ran the race, but you finished the race. So I am so proud to be a part of today's celebration and I wish you much continued success and luck, and thank you for not giving up. Um, I wanna thank everybody who is here today. Um, if you are staff at the Louisville Urban League and you made it out today, please stand. That would include former staff like Ben Richmond, who I see in the audience. Everybody, I see Savvy. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you for being here in a pandemic under these conditions. To the board of directors, if you would please just stand. I know you've heard from our board chair, Lori Lee, but any board members of the Louisville Urban League, would you please stand? Thank you all so much. I want to say a special thank you um, because Brandy Pryor has allowed me to call her house at 12.30 at night to talk to Lyndon when I needed to scream and cry about something that happened during the day. And so uh, Brandy's not here, but I understand she's watching online, so I wanna say thank you to her. She was my last hire at the city and Lyndon was my first hire at the Urban League, so they are really family. And really so is everybody at the league. In fact, if you don't work somewhere where people constantly tell you they love you, then you don't work at the Louisville Urban League. So it's a pretty good gig. I wanted to um, say, I know that there are a lot of people who feel very, you know, have congratulated me and I thank you all. And Val just told me on the way, I said, I'm gonna correct the record. I'm getting ready to tell everybody who helped. And she said, but nothing happens without a leader. So I appreciate the love and the support but also please understand that I recognize that I could not have done this without so many people. This took a village, literally, actually an entire village. And I just want to um, walk through, I don't have a speech written because I have been panicking about this event for the past month and I haven't been able to focus at all, but I kind of have, look at these notes Christina gave me. I don't even know what, it's not even a speech, it's like list of stuff. I don't know how she thinks I'm gonna read this, but I'm gonna try to go through. By the time we competed for this project, you remember we were competing against other developers? I had lost a developer <laughs> and one of our advisors who was upset when I invited other people that he wasn't comfortable with. My theory was this requires everybody. This requires all of us. We have to figure out how to get this done, and I can't do it alone, and you can't do it alone. We need everybody, and that's how we proceeded. We competed at LCCC, and thank you to the community for standing up and saying, not another liquor store, not another whatever. We want something different. This community spoke, and we were able to respond. But who else responded? The city didn't just allow us to win. And believe me, the community spoke and voted. There was online voting. There was in-person voting. There were community meetings. I think the process was nine months. I saw Ramona Lindsay here somewhere. She was the president of the, there she is, of the um, West Louisville Council. At the time, they were the Food Port Council. And let's just be clear, if I just rewind for a second, we couldn't even be here if Stephen Riley and Caroline Heine had not poured out so much of their souls into this project. It didn't move forward what they wanted, but they passed the baton. They were willing to do that, constantly supporting. You gotta recognize whose shoulders you stand on. 
and how you get over. That's what I know for sure. But we competed and we won. And the mayor's office and the city of Louisville did something a little bit different. They gave us $10 million to start this project. I would submit to you that without that $10 million investment, people would never have taken this project seriously. You cannot, that's right. You cannot fundraise when you are broke. Nobody helps poor people. That's the point, that's part of the problem. But we, I ain't gonna get into that today. I'm gonna let y'all off the hook. All right, don't worry about it. <laughs> but that $10 million that the mayor's office pushed, Mary Ellen Wiederwall, the meetings, the nights, the work, the phone calls, the texts from me, the work she got done, the mayor, the mayor's office, but also, and this is important, people don't talk about it, Metro Council, Democrats and Republicans. This building is a symbol of something so much greater than I have the words to describe. And I want you to understand that. And I don't wanna talk for a long time, but I am gonna take my time because it's important to tell what happened. Because there were times in this project when I found myself on my knees. Like when we couldn't really get a big corporation and Russ Cox said, we'll buy the naming rights for $5 million. Do you understand what it felt like for a corporation like Norton to say, we see you? And let me be clear, it was not Norton, it was Russ. It was my friend. Thank you, Russ. I, I saw you, I'm sure you're speaking today. Because most of you all surely know that we raised $43 million, if you count the new markets and everything else, and, tw and the city's 10 million. Um, we raised 43 million in 22 months. We used almost more than 3 million of that just to clean the land. It was contaminated, clean it up and do all of that. And then we took out a loan for the last $10 million. Now that is not the business plan that I wanted. I wanted to build this debt free. But thank you to the banks that came together to lead that work. And so if you have not um, signed your name to a $10 million loan, you might not understand the level of stress involved in that. But God has brought me this far. I imagine he will continue to do so, but only with your help and with your support. And I just want to say to you all, um, to especially Jim Host, to Val Jones, to Carla Deering, to Christina Shadle, to all of the folks who have been there, Alice Houston, to all of you who have given, who have challenged me, who have doubted me, to the people who walked out on us, who walked out on me, who bet against me, to the guy who put me out of his house, and to the man who put my staff out of his business. Thank you. We did this. Please welcome Russell Cox. President and CEO of Norton Healthcare. I've got to hurry. I'll be on Sadiqa probation if I don't get done in two minutes. I understand how that works. October 14th, 2019, we stood right out there and we made a commitment. I told you that day that the commitment of $5 million was not a donation, that it was an investment. Today, we see the beginnings and we celebrate the return on that investment. But you know what the best part is? It's not monetary. That return is being part of momentum that's changing our community. You can feel it. The drive here, you can see it in the distance and you can feel the energy. You can feel the momentum. You can feel what's happening because of what Sadiqwa did. What's the other return? Look, a place that, as the governor said, is a beacon of health and wellness but it also talks about access. We're where we should be. We're doing the things that we should be doing. And you know what else? That return is the satisfaction 
of doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place, with the right partners. So very important. It's all about hope, too. We've heard that word a whole lot today. And hope is important. And you know what I hope most of all? I hope that we as a community run faster than the wonderful athletes that are going to be going around this track on a regular basis, but that we run faster to working together to make this community what we all want it to be. But this is such a wonderful building. We have so many buildings that have a blue in on them, and they're all doing wonderful work, and we're going to be bringing more of them throughout this entire community, trust me. But this one, this one is the most important one that we've ever done. Thank you, Sadiqwa. Please welcome Alan Wheatley from Humana Inc. Thank, thank you very much. I'll, I'll be brief, although I do like having the mask off for a couple of minutes. So uh, you know, last spring, two, two things really happened in, in my life. Uh, one, one awful, one awesome. The awful happened to all of us. It's, it's the pandemic. Uh, the, the awesome was I had the opportunity to meet Sadiqwa Reynolds for the first time. And, and um, uh, we, we had a, a, a great relationship. This is the first time we've met in person uh, since, since uh, you know, since, since we've known each other. And, and, and um, I, you know, I, I think we built a friendship that, that, that I, I believe will be lasting for, for a long, long time. And, and I think Russ said it well, that this Humana's commitment was, was an investment, not, not a donation. So I think that's very well stated. Uh, we, we very much love this community. I, I'm born and raised here. It, it, it means the world to me. I, I love Louisville. I love the people in it. And, and, I, and, and we can't thrive as a community if the West End of Louisville doesn't thrive. And we have to make the investments. We've made the investments, but we have to do more. Uh, I, I did find something very funny in what Sadiqwa had to say. She said this, through this process, this was the first time that she's ever tried to raise money. Well, when Humana made our commitment, she, she asked me to do a favor, and she said, hey, I want, I want you and I to call a variety of business leaders across the community and, and talk about Humana's commitment and, and what they could potentially do to help support. And, and I said, great, ha happy to do that. I thought we'd make a few phone calls and life would be great. She sent me a list about this long. I'm like, okay. Uh, and then um, we, we got on about the, I think the second phone call. I won't tell you who it was, but, but the individual basically very quickly in the meeting said, hey, we we, we've already committed for the year. We, we're looking past this. This isn't the kind of investment we make. I got to tell you, she went up him one side and down the other. And I was like, oh, my. And we're on, you know, we're on video calls. And I'm like, oh, my God. So we got off the call because we always did a debrief. And I'm like, hey, Sadiqa, I don't think you can talk to people like that. She said, um, we will get some money. We will not take no for an answer. And, and I, think, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think that really spells out. Uh, you know, her, her, you know, her view of how she approached this project and, and what was important to her because she had a vision and the Urban League had a vision and everybody that works for her rallied around that vision and she let me be a part of it and I will forever be grateful for that because th this, this, this asset will help our communities and help our people in the communities be healthier, be happier, and be more united. And that's what we need more of in life. And, I, and I, I, I will tell you this is the first time I've been here. It won't be the last. The only way we make this work is if we do it together and we stay committed. So I'm telling you that Humana is going to be here. We will be present. I can't wait to do meetings in the meeting room. I can't wait to have events here. And I cannot wait to bring my family down here to see what this event is, what this complex is, and, and take part in all the wonderful festivities. So thank you very much. Please welcome Ben Breyer, Kindred Healthcare. Good morning, everyone. I was, uh, Alan had to laugh at your, your comments. I, I think I was 
one of the folks on that list uh, that you and Sadiqa called, I was not the number two person who you had to browbeat. In fact, I, I, I don't know, you know, you had a lot of people who gave pretty quickly, but I don't know if anybody gave as quick as we said, yes, let's do it. We want to do this. And uh, on behalf of Kindred Healthcare, we're, we're thrilled to have, have, have given a million dollars to, to have named the Kindred Indoor, uh, the Kindred Indoor Track uh, here at this beautiful facility. Congratulations, Sadiqa, to you and your team and everybody who has put this together for our community. You know, Kindred doesn't have a gigantic presence in Louisville and in Kentucky much anymore. We, uh, of course, have our corporate headquarters, but we care deeply in all the communities that we work, that we help and serve and try and be a part of those communities. And I think there's no better example of doing that than here uh, in our hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. We believe, and I have stated this many, many times, that public-private partnerships can work and function incredibly well for projects like this and we are thrilled to be a part of it. We congratulate you again and we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you all. I don't think I've heard applause in about a year. Thank you. <laughs> so about 15 months ago, the very first trip I took as your new governor was the opening of the new YMCA, along with the Norton Clinic connected to it that as of today serves as a vaccination clinic. And I remember back to that day of one of hope, of one of excitement. You could feel the energy. And this is one of the first trips I've taken since COVID. It's exciting. You can feel opportunity. You can feel hope. You can feel excitement. And when you look inside, you will see one of the best facilities in this city, in this state, and in this nation. And it's right here benefiting this community. You know, building a better world doesn't happen overnight, but this facility sure went up quickly. <laughs> and I think it serves as a beacon, as a reminder of what's possible. But if I remember back 15 months ago, when we were talking at the YMCA, we said, let's make sure this isn't the only announcement. Let's make sure that this is not the end. And 15 months later, we're standing at something even bigger exciting, and again, um, moving all of us forward. You know, we are one state and one people, even if it hasn't always felt that way. But at this time, this historic moment, as we deal with a once in a century pandemic, I think we have some opportunities to get things right that in the past we've gotten wrong, to set a better example moving forward and to make sure we are intentional in each and everything we do. And we're standing here today at a moment of hope for the community, but, but for the world. With safe and effective vaccines that are being provided all over Kentucky and all over the country. And you have my commitment that this will be done in an equitable manner. Nobody will be left out. And we're going to tell you when we're coming up short. Right now, we're still coming up short. But we are going to work each and every day with partners like the Urban League, with uh, so many of you that have held up uh, pop-up clinics uh, in your facilities to make sure that no one is left out, that everybody counts, and we get everyone protected from this horrible virus. And I hope this summer uh, we end it and we defeat COVID for good. I also want to, first I want to acknowledge so many people that I know Sadiq was going to mention when she has a chance that, that saw this vision, saw this opportunity, helped make it happen, uh, prove that we can be one community when we really try. But I gotta, I gotta talk about Sadiqa Reynolds. So when I won the governor's election and the next day said, okay, what do we do now? I reached out for a transition team. And when I was looking for the people that could shepherd us from having one to being ready to govern, I called Sadiqa and I asked her to help us on our economic development efforts, knowing that she could bring a voice and a passion. And I will tell you, once we got done with that, I, I looked at Sadiqa and I said, well, you know, we also have an administration to run. She said, Andy, I've already got a mission. She said, I already have a purpose. 
and said, I'm giving everything I've got to the job and the vision and where we're going, and look at where it is today. So this is an incredible day, but this shouldn't be the last incredible day. So while we celebrate, while we thank everybody that's been involved, let's commit to the next announcement, and the next one after that, and the next one after that, and after that, and after that, and after that. We continue to be intentional. We continue to support visionary leaderships. That big, brighter world is possible. Thank you all very much. All of you who, everybody here deserves to cut this ribbon because you've done something to help support this project. But with COVID and my desire to take the mask off, I had to make some choices. And what I decided was, while we all have sacrificed, nobody has sacrificed more than my daughters. And so today, holding this ribbon alone are my children. Winter Reynolds, Sydney Reynolds, and thank you to their father for being an amazing co-partner. I appreciate it. I appreciate you all. And now I'm going to cut it. We got to rush in because we're behind on time. All right. Thank you all. Tighten. Do I? How do I do? I've actually never. What do I just do cut? Three. Okay. Two. One. I'm not doing it yet. Should I? <laughs>